Good morning, everyone. First things first. Good. Checking the audio. And we are fine. Yes. Anyway, welcome in. My name is Graham. This is Bibby. And we have working audio today. This is nice. For now. For now. Anyway, welcome in. How are we all doing? Um... Let's get straight through the intro so we can start talking about news and games and stuff. As mentioned, I'm Graham. This is Big We are Ice Cream Uploads, as you can tell from my Ice Cream Uploads baseball cap. A merch that you can't buy by typing exclamation mark merch, but you can buy other forms if you're interested. Anyway, we are Ice Cream Uploads. This, in true ice creamy fashion, is The Scoop, your daily dose of news from the world of video games and beyond. We're going to give you our thoughts and impressions on the biggest, the best, and the breaking stories in the world of video games over the last 24 hours. We'll give you our thoughts, impressions, and in in return, we want your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions. A little bit of a discussion. Please, please feel free to do that. And it's important that you do because we may go live each and every single weekday at 10 a.m. on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. But we turn this live stream into a video, a, pod, uh, a podcast, should I say, a video on YouTube, an audio podcast on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Google Play. So if you are in the chat right now, please feel free to use your voice on behalf of those that watch and listen on demand later on. Because I see you guys on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, and you guys on, on SoundCloud, I know, I know. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, even though we're not here, because this is post-content, pre-recorded on demand, but Jeez. nice! <laughs> um, a couple of things to mention before we get going. Obviously, it's getting very close now to our Insert Coin stream. We are part of the Insert Coin family now, yay! So, Insert Coin, if you don't know who they are, oh, they yeah. are possibly the coolest... Uh, apart from ice cream, obviously they're on they're on a par with ice cream, uh, but possibly the coolest gaming merch that you could ever see. Insert Coin have been around in the UK uh, for a while. I do believe they ship internationally as well, um, but they take your favourite game and create merch on it. But rather than just sticking uh, Sonic the Hedgehog on a T-shirt, they'll do some sort of vibe where they might go with I don't know the Emerald Hill Zone or whatever and change it so that it becomes cool clothing and there's nothing better than wearing an insert coin top so let, let, let me stop talking about different types of top let me show you this click on bib make bib big big so look at this look at that that hoodie yeah 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 so, so someone could see that and go oh, that, he's just wearing a nice hoodie there another gamer will walk past see it and just go annoying uh, knowingly Right, lad. Nice, nice, nice hoodie. Know exactly yeah. that that is a Resident Evil hoodie. So yeah, nice, no, nice. No, that's the kind of stuff that Insert can do very well. Anyway, we will be streaming on their channel on the coming Wednesday um, in the uh, late afternoon, early evening. We haven't fully actually uh, chosen a time that we will be streaming, but we will be streaming a game TBA uh, on that channel. So feel free to join me and Bib on at official Insert Coin uh, on Wednesday. So nice, nice. Good, good morning, normal sounding gents. Hey, I know it's a surprise. I mean, that's what, I mean, Streamlabs are nice, nice. I mean, I have literally done about five cream. Streamlabs updates over the last week. Every morning, pretty much turning on Streamlabs update. I had a Windows update last night, so I thought it was all going to go wrong this morning. So we started with audio. I'll take that as a win. Um, good morning, Lake. Uh, good morning, Awish. Hi, Ice Cream. You remember me. Hey, welcome in. I, do you know what? I'm going to say no, because I, I can't remember if, were you here... Do you know, I'll, I'll get it wrong either way, so I'll guess both of them. Were you here for The uh, the Last of Us, or was it PUBG? I kind of remember. Um, but Pirates, thank you very much for the host, and... I love to see your face, hope you both are well. <laughs> I love to see your face, hope you both are well. Welcome in, Mr. Pirate. How the devil are you? The Last of Us, I thought it was, I thought it was. Um, I couldn't remember if you were here for The Last of Us, or I was kind of in my head con conflicting. There was someone that was speaking Russian not too long back, and I can't remember the name of that person, so I was like, is... Is it, is it that one? Is it that one? But, but yeah, welcome back. Welcome back. How are you doing? How are you doing? Um, uh, Lake says, playing PUBG on my phone. Um, uh, just, I, uh, I just got in the mail. Oh, you've just got the phone in the in the mail? Is that what you mean? Uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, are you watching us on the phone as well? Um, but anyway, anyway, anyway. Bib, looking all snazzy yes. in your RPD top. Yes. How's, th uh, how's things? How's tricks? You all right, mate? Yeah, good, mate. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Did you uh, did you play any games last night? And this isn't me just baiting like a particular answer. Uh, uh, what did you play last night, Graham? Did well, you it's funny you night? should ask. Um, <laughs> no, I I played games, but I uh, was 
uh, doing PUBG bits, but my I think my scuff controller has finally died after uh, a couple of years of usage. My trigger is, is a bit dodgy in it, so I'm trying to sort that out. But it's probably a blessing in disguise, because I'm playing with my scuff controller on my PS5 rather than the PS5 mm -hmm. controller, because it's a PS4 game. But at the point when the game becomes a PS5 game, I won't be able to use that controller anymore. So I need to stop using it. Yeah. Um, and move, yeah. to, move to the dual sense, so it's probably a good thing to push me on, really. Um, but yeah, other than that, I was I was tinkering uh, with streamy bits, but not not much beyond that. What about you? Uh, I played a little bit of Pez Six um, on my PC. I've got the Maxi file, so it's like the modern day transfers and kits and stadiums and stuff like that. But just playing like if you're playing the Master League part of it, you're still playing with like Castolo and Dodo and stuff like that. Um, just finished my first season, came rock bottom with the league with about eight points um, because obviously your team is shit and it's just getting through the first season. This is what I don't get right. Small rant. When it comes to football games nowadays and career mode, like back, way back when, if you started with the team that like your default Pez team, it was, it was just about getting through your first season. See what players you could potentially keep and then ship the rest out and then try and get as much money as you can to try and build your team up. You don't get that with the new Pez. Like after the first season, we actually had a really, really good team. Like the whole team pretty much got changed. Whereas on this, you're looking at maybe three players, if that, and then trying to get rid of the shit players. You just have it playing with players like uh, Espimas, uh, playing him on the left hand side. He's just not very good. Like he's, it, it, there's no, <laughs> he's just shit. And then <laughs> when you buy someone who can actually play there, you kind of think that there's a massive. Dip. The stats actually mean something. And that's something that I think has been forgotten across all football games. I mean, any sports game, uh, it could be NBA, it could be NHL, it could be FIFA, it could be Pro Evo, it don't matter. But I feel like back in the day, the stats actually mattered and that's what I'm enjoying the most because I'm just going like for like. I'm bringing a shit player out and I'm bringing a new player in. And that kind of thing is, is making me happy having to go through that again. Uh, only winning one game in the entire season and then drawing a shitload of games. Um, finishing rock bottom with the table, but getting to a cup final, losing on penalties, it's just made me feel a little bit nostalgic. But I did actually play another game last night for a couple of hours on my Nintendo Switch, and I had to take a picture of it because I didn't know what it was called and I couldn't pronounce it. Uh, it was a game that was on the marketplace. It was meant to be twelve pounds, and it's on sale at the moment for eighty p. So I thought <laughs> I'll just take the pun. Eighty p. That's, that's cheaper. Uh, that's cheaper than McDonald's burger. Yeah, I'll have a go. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's called X Order. And it's a it's a turn based strategy game. Uh, uh, that's that's lost my times. attention now. Nope. <laughs> I know. That's Sorry a Bibby game. It. Turn based strategy yeah. in medieval. That's Bibby. <laughs> uh, and I actually really enjoyed it. It took it took a good hour for me to be able to get to terms with how it plays because I didn't I didn't know what I was doing. It doesn't hold your hand in any way, shape, or form. It kind of tells you what you need to do, but you need to work it out for yourself. So like you'll have certain characters that will do more damage but have less health. And then you'll have certain characters that are pretty good from range that can knock other other players out of the range of fire. Um, but yeah, it's actually a really, really good game. So I played that for probably two hours last night. Samantha went to venture and he coming up. I was like, yep. And just, then half just an hour in a later, minute. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. me. I, I do that. Like It could be I'll have a PUBG stream on or it could be on my phone or whatever. And Daniel Black, like, I'm off up. Do you want me to turn the lights and stuff off? Are you coming? He's like, no, no, I'm coming. I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it now. Um, and then like 45 minutes later, I'm, I'm still there sat on yeah. my phone. Or I started watching a game of PUBG, <laughs> which then got a bit spicy and then ended up just watched it all the way through to the end. It's always the case as well. well like, I like, mentioned that it was literally how it, exactly how it went <laughs> last night. <laughs> it's literally like, like, you guarantee if you're watching something, be it a video game, be it a PUBG or whatever, a game that has the potential to, to drag on or finish abruptly. You could watch five games and they'll all finish abruptly. Someone goes to bed, yeah. that game's going to be the one that they win with like 20 kills, so you have to watch it all kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, I, did, uh, I did start in bed last night. Uh, oh, Easy Tiger. The it's not that Tony <laughs> The Tony Hawk's documentary, pretending to be a Superman. And oh my God, I got it's like an hour and a half. It's like a proper full-on. Uh, documentary. Uh, I got 45 minutes into it, and it was like I looked at my phone. It's quarter to one. I was like, "Fucking hell!" Turn it off. Try to sleep. 45 uh, an hour and a half is a proper documentary. You want to watch yourself? Uh, Bedrooms to billions. The PlayStation story. Three hours and 45 <laughs> minutes. That bad boy is. <laughs> the, well, that is on my list of things to watch. To be fair, uh, the, that the only reason I watched that in full um, is because I had COVID and I got up at like four o'clock in the morning and, and couldn't sleep, so I ended up just laid on the couch watching. That, like doing the half in and half out of sleep sort of yeah. thing. 
It's um, to be heading though because I was watching it so early in the morning or late at night, whichever one you want to choose before obviously I fell asleep. The, the music on it is obviously amazing um, because it's just taking tracks from the actual game and just overlaying them while people are telling stories. I'm a superman. Um, yeah, so like the music could go dead loud but they're talking really quiet so like samantha's asleep next to me and i'm like fucking hell i go from eight to three and then when they finish when the music finished put it back up to eight and then it's out of nowhere someone will start grinding a cky i'll start blasting I'm like, for fuck's sake <laughs> put it down to three again <laughs> but yeah if you haven't watched that pretending to be a superman and you have a keen interest or did have an interest in the tony arcs franchise you have to watch it is unbelievable See, so I've, far. I've not even played tony arcs remastered yet that's, that's i haven't that's, i haven't got it yeah, i don't want it i still want to go back and do that so yeah at some point i will but anyway uh just going to interrupt because i'm going to switch to alternate cam one day uh, next day he's, he's rocked up at my house so that's good to see so yes I'm left gonna... 24 hours that yeah i i ordered it um i was it... went on the scoop yesterday morning yeah yeah so yeah 24 hour ish boom there you go nice i'll take that i'll take that nice nice, nice. anyway should we jump into some news um good morning lads Maybe we should. S- says gary good morning um uh just want to shout out pirate again thank you very much once again for the sub how the devil are you mr yeah. pirate uh, how's things? Quiet or are you working? Uh, are you just lurking and lingering? Or have you buggered off now? Is that what, is that how it is? Just throw your money at us and leave. Is that is that the relationship we have? But no, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, first news story of the day, which ties nicely in to the hoodie that Bibby is wearing. Exclamation mark, insert coin. If you want to save money on insert coin gear like that hoodie. Um, there we go. Uh, this is written by Wes Yinpool. Uh, I've not read it. You guys can see it on the screen. I'm not looking at it. I'm purposely looking away so I can save it for myself. But Wes Yinpool usually has good taglines. Hopefully this is. Let's see. Let me see. Capcom announces Resident Evil showcase for next week. Village gameplay, new trailer, more. Boo! He went for useful as opposed to funny. I'm disappointed there, Wes. God. Um, So Capcom has announced a Resident Evil showcase set for 10 p.m. UK time on the 20th. 1st of January, so that's next Thursday, 10 p.m. UK time. Um, so there is an embedded tweet that I will read. Obviously, it's not fully formatted properly because of the uh, cookies that Eurogame has, um, but uh, and I don't want them. So uh, don't miss the Resident Evil showcase on January 21st at 10 p.m. GMT, 11 p.m. CET. Join Brittany Brombacher at Blonde Nerd on a guided tour of Resident Evil Village, including a new trailer, the first ever gameplay and lots more Resident Evil news. It's a good job Bibby's not on screen. Bibby, put the mouse back in the house. It's a family show. God, calm down. Uh, <laughs> friends reference there, by the way. Uh, during the show, we'll get our first look at gameplay of Resident Evil Village and lots more Resident Evil news. Perhaps that suggests we'll see announcements around other new upcoming Resident Evil games and maybe a release date for Village. Resident Evil Village is a direct follow-up to the superb Resident Evil 7 uh, and is due out on PC, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X at some point in 2021. Bib, a couple of questions. Yes. Excited for okay. this showcase and the second question is uh, just so that you can Give a little bit of education to someone like me who hasn't played them all. They said follow up to the superb Resident Evil Seven. Do you agree? Yep. I agree. I I wholeheartedly agree. I think Resident Evil Seven was the game that got us back on track. I think it was a game that uh, was. I think it was so far left field of what we come to expect from a Resident Evil game in terms of it being a first person uh, survival horror shooter. Um, we have had previously resident evil games that was in first person more notably resident evil gun survivor one and two uh, as well as dead aim uh all of which obviously i have uh they're not very good <laughs> especially resident evil survivor one it's fucking toilet don't even play that game dead aim was pretty good um but yeah th- those was there's a reason they were spin-off games you know what i mean but resident evil 7 
us back on track in terms of survival horror. And it made me shit my pants uncontrollably all the way through the game. It was that's a fantastic not just like um, a statement. Bibby actually did shit himself. By the way. <laughs> I sold myself, <laughs> uh, but it, they are fantastic. It, it was a fantastic game. Um, I think from a, a neutral standpoint, I think it brought a lot more people back. Well, a lot of people into the franchise because of the way that the game was played. Um, I think it appealed to a lot of people that maybe didn't fancy it. I mean, a lot of people probably still think that Resident Evil still is tank controls, which I wish it would be. I do appreciate the way that the game has kind of evolved and influenced a lot of other games um, that have come after it, not in terms of just Resident Evil, but a lot of other third-person, over-the-shoulder kind of games. So where we're at now, I think going back with a first-person perspective with Resident Evil 8 is perfect we've just had resident evil remake 2 and 3 in between 7 and 8 coming out uh, which obviously were remasters of previously old 1990s games um which were third person i think bringing back a, a, a first person 148 i'm still not sure on the story that's the only thing that's leaving me a bit more skeptical I've, obviously the trailers we've seen two trailers so far and then we've seen uh what uh, capcom posted just like a 30 second trailer of what's to come uh, when he, when you can see it. I've just played that video uh, for those watching the video version yeah. of this as well, so that will have gone through on screen without the audio, obviously. <clears throat> it's it's uh, I don't I reserve judgment from it, but from my standpoint, I didn't think it was going to go here. <laughs> I mean, it's we kind of had a, we've we've seen some weird shit over the years from what's come out of the Resident Evil camp. So, uh, with how good Seven was uh, and with the hits after hits that we've had, the, the, this has to be a hit. We've had three hits back to back now with Seven. Good things coming in threes, though, two and not fours. Yeah, yeah, very good point. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. The one thing that I do need to figure out, though, is whether or not we will be able to actually stream this showcase. Uh, good point, actually. Um, let me see. Let's click through to the tweet, see if there's any details on it. Uh... That would be pretty cool, but I know sometimes that I don't want to get a copyright strike for the shit. Um so I don't know whether or not watch-alongs will be possible. I mean, it could just be that we uh, we end up doing a watch-along rather than us restreaming it. Maybe something that we'll have to look into a little yeah. bit. I mean, I imagine, um, I imagine we could do a live uh, restream and have the stream in our stream. Yeah, I'd imagine that uh, because it's free marketing for the video game. Uh, but then again, I'm not 100 percent sure. We'll have yeah. to look into it. But but I would be surprised if you can't do that. Um, Gary says, I'm a bit meh on Resi these days. Uh, I love the remakes, but the new ones, not so much. Um, see, that was why I, I asked the question, because I haven't... I mean, I, I knew the general sentiment around Resi dropped off, and then I knew the sentiment around Resi picked up, but I wasn't aware if the pickup was because of 2 and 3 remakes um, or because of 7 I'd, I'd hit home, but Bibby says 7 did slap. Yeah. To be fair... I, 7 I, was phenomenal. I think... I think um, Precision, I think I watched Precision play some of Seven, and he said Seven was good, actually, thinking about it. And Josie may have played some of it on the channel as well, and I think she might have said yeah, the same. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that said, I think, yeah, everyone that I know that's had opinion that's actually played Seven have said that it has been really good. Yeah. It was it was amazing. Um, I, I wasn't expecting much from it, if I was being honest, but it was a, a fantastic game. I mean, it is available... <laughs> If I say it three times, Robbo will appear. Um, but it is available <laughs> on Games Pass on PC and uh, Xbox. So if you have got Games it's Pass... It's available on what, sorry? <laughs> Games Pass, Game Pass, Game Pass. <laughs> Robbo and Daniel appears! <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, if you if you are into Man's but I mean, you can probably pick it up now for next to nothing anyway. Um, it's been out a couple of years. So you can probably pick it up for about a tenner. But if you've got Game Pass, just give it a go. I mean, if you are in the market for... If you anyone ever played PT, um, the, the the now infamous game, it's like that, but obviously much bigger because you're not just running around one corridor. But it is a, a corridor-ish type game um, because you're going into little tight areas. One of the uh, first just, comments, sorry, just interrupt. One of the first comments, just before you move away from the PT bit, I know you were still talking about it, but on that PT bit specifically, a contrasting comment from the Punisher MHN on Twitter responding to their video says RE7 was mediocre the story wasn't captivating the gameplay was made from the whole PT craze I really hope this one brings its own spice to the series 
Alternatively, Shinobi FPS says, look, I understand a lot of people hate on this first person style for Resident Evil, but the first person style just gives an extremely unsettling feel, and I love it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let you carry on in a second. I would agree with Shinobi FPS. I mean, because I'm not speaking from a resi history, I'm speaking from a what I know would scare the shit. Playing first yeah. person games would scare me more than playing a third person game. Un- undoubtedly. Anyway, sorry, you were saying before I interrupted. Well, Resident Evil is known for being atmospheric, and what what's better than putting someone in a dark, dingy corridor in first person, knowing full well that you have two bullets left in the chamber? That's, I don't think that's it's that's, not a that's what that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what Resident Evil is. Um, I mean, it, it was tank controls, so you could hear the zombies before you could technically see them because of the way that the camera angle and the the static backgrounds were. I think if Resident Evil nowadays came out with tank controls, it would not do very well. I think we've evolved past that, which yeah. is unfortunate from my aspect. I would love to be able to do both. So if you unlocked the game and it's in the way that it was meant to be played, and then you have the opportunity to be able to go back and play uh, with tank controls, that would be amazing. But I was genuinely uh, considering buying Resident Evil 2 for my PC because there is a mod that you can put onto it to have a play in uh, with tank controls or in first person, because I think Resident Evil 2 in first person would be unbelievable. Um, yeah. So that's definitely something <clears throat> I want to look into at some point. There's definitely evolutions within gaming itself, stepping away from from Resident Evil specific content, but that 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 tank controls, there is still a place for that sort of gameplay. Mm-hmm. And the, the reference I'm going to use is that as an example, uh, which is another reason for me to shout out Insert Coin, by the way, because the other day, uh, me and Bib played... Um, Streets of Rage 4, which is incredible. Yes. Uh, really, really good. Naturally, video gaming has moved on from side-scrolling. Not entirely, but naturally it has. Everything evolves. You want bigger, you want better, you want mm. louder, you want faster, you want stronger, you want whatever. Not always, um, and the not always bit is where tank control sits and where side-scrollers sits. And, and so on. Some people, that's all they want to play, but the majority of people have evolved past that, naturally. Um, but we went back and played Streets of Rage 4, which is obviously a new game, but side-scrolling uh, elements based on the original stuff. Class game. Genuinely, mm-hmm. extremely, extremely good. Enjoyed it so much. Um, uh, Gone Hollow Live. Good morning. Welcome in. How are you doing? Um, Hello. Says, Resident Evil 7 was brilliant, in my opinion. My only negative was the lack of enemy types. Um, it yeah. felt like the closest Resident Evil game to the original. Thoughts, babe? I agree. Yeah, I agree. Um, I can't remember what they were called, but there was the, the, the monsters that kind of come out. Were they called the blobs or something like that? It was basically just like cockroaches or like oil all built up into a, a, an enemy that can stretch its arms and stuff like that, which was a pain in the ass. There was one specific, but in fact, I won't say it in case anyone does end up picking it up sometime soon, but there is one bit where the difficulty spike absolutely kicks in uh, as you go down into a cellar. That's the only thing I want to say about it. But apart from that, I agree. I mean, the boss types were great, I thought. Um, yeah, I, I, overall, I mean, I absolutely adored that game. I think it definitely put us in perspective as to where we can go with the story. I think it's going to, I think eight is going to be weird and wacky. Um, I don't think it will be as hot as horror. Horror isn't a word, <laughs> um, but I don't think it will. <laughs> I don't think it will have that absolute survival horror element to it. I think I think it will be a bit batshit crazy, but that's kind of what we've come to expect from Resident Evil film. But apart from a uh, Resident Evil game, but apart from that, we have got <laughs> quite a few. Yeah, we've got quite a few films coming out this year that hopefully will be not batshit crazy because the, the, the Resident Evil films, the first one I thought was good. The second one was brilliant. I thought uh, Extinction was the best one out of the lot. Um but it just got fucking too weird. <clears throat> uh, I took the piss a bit with it. But yeah, we're having a Netflix series this year, as well as a film too, which I think will be absolutely incredible. We'll see. We'll see. I think I think it's a very good time to be getting into the Resident Evil franchise if you haven't already been a part of it. I mean, I I am speaking from uh, not being a Resident Evil fan, so I like the first one. Because the first one, just like with all video games, if I play a Battle Royale, I play PUBG because I don't mm-hmm. want um, the futuristic elements, the lasery guns that you might get in an Apex Legends um, or, or that sort of stuff. I want the real world boots on the ground. The same thing goes for my Call of Duty games. And, and back in the day, I played the Modern Warfare and things like that. But those over Black Ops, which has more exoskeleton suits and stuff. That's the kind of way that I play. 
Um, yeah. So Resident Evil, um, as the films went on, it was kind of the, it's no longer the real world. Because in theory, I mean, it's a fucking, it's a big stretch of the imagination. But in theory, there could be, uh, what what was it called? The underground thing? Was it the hive or the... Um, the hive. Is that what it's yeah, called? The hive. So the hive yeah, yeah. could be a couple of miles down the road, just under Manchester City Centre. Mm-hmm. Um, and in theory, it could all come out into real world now. But But then when you've got like the post-apocalyptic stuff by that point i'm like ah oh, okay it's, i kind of get that that has to come with the history of the story in the films you kind of have to develop to that point but by that point it, the story was kind of odd the the monsters and stuff were kind of odd it was the bigger gotta get bigger gotta get better gotta get louder yeah. gotta get faster um evolution of the films just pushed it too far so for yeah for me i loved the first film um um all sorts that little like plinky plinky piano like kind of scary music when you know shit's happening the the little red queen you're all going to die down here yeah i mean uh, i don't know how young british girls ever exist uh, like if, especially if they got that london accent because they all sound creepy as fuck <laughs> yeah. um yeah, the red, the red queen was uh was a bit intense yeah yeah good 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 film loved it i mean cheesy but good. It was. It was. It's a, on that team with Michelle Rodriguez in as well. To be fair. Yeah, I I remember last year, year before, me and Danielle. It was on TV, and I think we just left it on. Um, um, and saw her, and I was like, oh, as if she was in this. I didn't even remember that she was in this. And then you see like um, people that you've seen in other things as well, like the dude that gets uh, his face like lasered and you just see like the blood drips and stuff he was in like yeah. arrow and other things or whatever as well or something like that i can't, can't remember if that's what it was but um yeah 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 anyway um where is it gary says resi 4 is my personal favorite incredible game that thoughts babe mm. you see I, I the cool and edgy thing for me to say would be that resident evil 4 was the beginning of the end which in my heart of hearts i don't believe i do believe that it was the the turning point for them to go full action. Um, I think case in point was the, la- the the amount of bullets and herbs that you could get throughout the game. Getting points by killing enemies to then be able to go to a merchant to be able to buy new weapons and guns. and That kind of defeats uh, the whole almost yeah. survival. I mean, I, I remember complaining to you when I played Resident Evil 2 Remake that I just didn't have anything. I don't have anything yeah. left. <laughs> I've got nothing left. <laughs> That, that's the whole that's the whole point so like resident evil used to be pick your battles whether or not you want to take out every single zombie get three quarters of the way through the game and then realize that you've used every single bit of ammo that you've got and you've literally taken everything from the mansion that there is to take that was the whole point it was pick your battles you don't need to take that zombie out there's more than enough rooms to be able to navigate around him and then get through the door at the end so you don't have to waste the seven or eight bullets that you need to take out that zombie it's, that was the whole point of it. Um, yeah, but Vivian didn't tell me that until after I'd finished it. <laughs> um, when I'm there, like I've got, I've got to the final end bit. I've got three shotgun shells and two pistol bullets left. And Vivian's like, "You do realize if you shoot it in the leg, you can just knife it when it's on the floor." I was like, "No, <laughs> I've got 12, uh, 12 knives saved in my fucking trunk, kind of thing." You could have told me this already. But that, that's that. That for me is what a survival horror game should be. It should be looking at what you've got in your in your clip. And then thinking, do I need to use these now? And I think that's what Resident Evil 4 moved away from. I think it was very action orientated. With that's the first game that we had quick time events. So you might be running away from something, you having to smash the X button and, to, and then press left L1 and I want to jump over something. It was, I think, in my heart of hearts, I don't want to say that it was the beginning of the end but, um, because it's obviously come picked back up again. But I don't. It wasn't a bad game. Uh, the story was a bit. Mm. yeah it's i think so, five basically Bibby's got... being polite and what he wants to say is you're wrong yeah. <laughs> that's what he's I, I, I am being a little polite because the more i think about it the more it pisses me off but the best version <laughs> of the game if anyone ever played it was the wii version if anyone played the wii version of resident evil 4 it was the best version of the game um using the um nunchuck and the the remote to point at the screen and use it to swipe your knife or shoot shit i thought that was uh the best part the best version of the game but resident evil 5 was only okay it, you have to play that game co-op because shaper was a fucking waste of time <laughs> um as a as a cpu character uh and resident evil 6 the less said about that the better no resident evil 6 is the best one i'm i'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not taking anything from you because i'll show you now resident evil 6 logo is someone performing an act on a cam uh, on a giraffe 
If that's not a giraffe <laughs> having something done to it, then so that's that's what it is. I was I had that prepped. So I was waiting for you to mention Resident Evil Six, so I could mention giraffe yeah. blowjob on, on on screen. So there you go. <laughs> uh, but there you uh, go. mission accomplished. <laughs> no, yeah. And, I like the fact that we're starting to we starting to hopefully come back to its roots because I think that's what sells again. Resident Evil Re- Revelations one and two were both fantastic games. I really, really, really enjoyed them. Obviously, they were spin-offs, um, but they were both fantastic games. So yeah, maybe uh, maybe we've I'm I'm completely missing the point. Uh, Gary just said then maybe I'm in the minority. Then Resident Evil four was incredible for me. I loved every minute of it. It was a product of its time. Um, I mean, playing it when it first came out, I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was too easy, though, because <laughs> I was still playing it the way that I wanted to play the other ones where it was attack control, I'm saving my bullets, where I didn't need to. I was hard in shit um, that I, I genuinely didn't need to. It was the turning point, though. I do think it was far that it had too many action elements to it. If you've got seven or eight, it wasn't even zombies that are coming towards you and you have one shotgun and you're taking out all four of them, they get back up, you're shooting it. That shit. It should have never happened, but it got Resident Evil into people's hands that didn't. Yeah, I think, I think that's, that's from reading between the lines of someone that hasn't played it um, and listening to your contrasting opinions on it. Bibby is Bibby's a Resident Evil fan. Um, Gary isn't so much a Resident Evil fan. Um, so maybe that Resident Evil 4 is a game for the masses as opposed, as opposed to a game for yeah. the purists. I hate the word purists because it sounds like if something is pure, it's better. So I don't... don't don't mean in that sense, but the the OGs, maybe, the ones that were kind of there from the beginning. Four tried to evolve and push it to new audiences. Um, I and mean, the game has evolved over time, obviously okay. losing tank controls and stuff like that. But, but yeah, maybe that's what it was. Um, Gone Hollow Alive, in response to the little blob thing, says the molded, I believe. Is that what? Yep, you... that's correct. That is correct. Yep. And he also, uh, they also say, I say he, I assume. They always do that, I assume. Um, it, uh, they also say animated movies were pretty awesome. Thoughts? It was. Degeneration was amazing. Um, the that, CGI that was, element... That, that was wrestling, mate. Degeneration X. I've, I've seen that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love Degeneration. Uh, it's... I, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> those, are, those are fantastic films. Uh, it's it's weird, though, because as you're watching it, because it looks like the kind of graphics that you get in the game, as you're watching it, you're like, I'm going to pick up the pad in a minute, I'm going to get stuck in here, but you never pick up the pad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the storylines were fantastic. It's, it's amazing that they managed to come up with something like that, because I never would have thought they would have done. And I don't know if, how well it actually did, though. I don't know whether or not it sold many as, as they probably wanted them to. Um, but they, the, the, the CGI films were so much better than the actual films that came out. So, yeah. Asim says, Resident Evil 4 was a good game for me, but not a great Resident Evil game, if that makes sense. Also, the escorting slash babysitting of that girl can F off. Oh, God. Yeah. Sherry was a pain in the fucking ass. So you had to, what, uh, look after someone? Yeah, so you basically you had to rescue her. Um, and <laughs> she'd keep on getting picked up uh, by the enemies and then pick, picked up and carried away. And if, if they picked her up and carried her through a door, the game would end. But she just constantly get picked up like you'd shoot seven or eight enemies and then one of them would pick her up and then you she'd they'd just walk off but she just she was so fucking bone idle she didn't have a she didn't have a mind for herself oh it appears uh, there is a monster coming towards me do i run away or do i stand and wait to be picked up let's stand and yeah. wait to be picked up <laughs> no nope. pain in the ass i agree um, Gone Hollow Live says, not sure if you guys discussed the closed Resident Evil beta that's being shown at the showcase. Four to six multiplayer, apparently. Uh, one can hope for Outbreak 3 slash remake. I don't know how many times you've been into this podcast before, um, but Outbreak is something that I have been crying out for. I mean, I think he had a rant. It was either last week or the week before. I think it was just before Christmas, actually. Uh, someone's put uh, 10p in, Bib. Okay, we will sit back. This is going to go on for a while. Brace yourself. <laughs> Crack fingers. Uh, how long have we got? <laughs> But yeah, I think having a Resident Evil game that has multiplayer aspects that are 2v2 or 3v3 battles, that is why Umbrella Corps fell on its ass because it was a bag of dicks. It was so shit. Uh, there was no way that a Resident Evil game should ever be 2v2, 3v3, 4v4. They tried to make an esports out of it. No, you can't do that shit. The only way a Resident Evil game becomes online is when you're having to do an outbreak element to it. I don't I, the the ones in Resident Evil Revelations where it was like hard mode, it was like raid mode. That was decent, like that was okay as like a mercenaries mode. That's essentially what it was. But to have a two v two or three v three battle like we've been touting, uh, that nah, that doesn't sit with me. We need an outbreak. We need something that if 
four of us was it like me and graham and then two other people was in chat we all had different um stats so like i could carry weapons graham would be the master of unlocking uh asim uh would be i'd be the master of unlocking asim why, yeah, yeah. Why, why is he so locked in the first place? <laughs> uh, so Aston might be really good at uh, he, he might have an extra backpack, so we could have twelve different items rather than six. Like that kind of element where you're all build, building on teamwork from the old Outbreak games was fantastic. Why haven't we seen one of those? And on, in a world now where most people want to play in online games, why are we not seeing that stuff? Teamwork. I don't want to say it makes a dream work, but teamwork games having stuff like that would be fantastic this day and age. Do you feel? Um, so we had um was it resistance with three is that what it was called yeah um yeah do you yeah, feel yeah. like resident evil 2 and resident evil 3 are how can i put more shorter term projects they're not the big creating something from scratch brand new so resistance is it is it more cost effective for want of better words to put resistance out alongside resident evil 3 but if you are going to do something along the lines of outbreak are you more likely to get something like that with the Resident Evil 7, which is something brand new that's been built from the ground yeah. up? And not, I don't want to say, I, I don't want to imply that they just threw out Resident Evil 3. That's not what I'm at all. Um, but it was 12 months after the first game. So they were clearly, they had a lot of groundwork with the engine and the assets, and they've just used all of that stuff on two. They've mm-hmm. essentially repurposed a lot of it and pushed it out for three. Um, yeah. So resistance is that just a case of okay we can put this out without it being too expensive but would you do you think you'd be more likely to get something with outbreak or is that just like wishful thinking potentially no uh, i think outbreak with I village think if, say. Yeah, i think if resistance came out on its own it wouldn't have sold anything right. i feel like it, it wasn't a good enough game for it to be able to go because there's no way that you'd been able to charge full price for it and i think even if it was down to maybe 20 quid i don't think most people would have paid for that either it just isn't a very good game i don't like the, the the mastermind aspect of it so you've got four players running about and then you'll have one person in the chair the games master shall we call him uh put in different obstacles in your way it just wasn't a, a functional game i mean i've re-downloaded it and i'm I, i'm gonna replay it again at some point but it just isn't the resident evil experience that i'm looking for two and three originally were both short games you can complete that game speedrunners have done that game in less than an hour for someone to be able to play through for the first time, you'll maybe do it in seven hours. I mean, Resident Evil 2 was a lot longer than three, purely because there was two discs. Two and and purely alive. because I spent 12 hours running away from that big fucker who <laughs> wouldn't leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. But even the original games were really, really short. Um, so the remakes was never going to be a long game anyway. I do feel it was more of a tech demo from their side. It definitely, Resident Evil 2 was 100% fan service because that was and is now my favourite Resident Evil game of all time. What the um, remake? the remake of it yeah because it was phenomenal it hit every single note that i wanted it to uh three maybe not yeah there's a comment there that kind of um touches on that from gone hollow live user couldn't take assets for outbreak and give us the damn resident evil 3 clock tower <laughs> couldn't have put it better myself um so yeah i think two was definitely fan service three i think was just to because you've had two we'll give you three um it would not surprise me if after eight we ended up getting a remake of resident evil 4 but please if there is anyone, if there is a god out there, please just give us an outbreak game. You've got the assets, you've got you've got shit there to be able to give us a decent outbreak game. Um, you put all your you put all the, all this effort into making Resident Evil Resistance. Believe me, so, if yeah. you made an if you made an outbreak, it'd sell far more. As someone that doesn't class themselves as any form of Resident Evil fan, I'm a fan. I will play the games and I will enjoy the games, but I'm not particularly a, a, like. A, any more than that like yeah it's not something i would wear on my sleeve i'm a resident evil fan um so i can look at this from the outside it's almost like the same as looking at why don't they make an open world pokemon game uh for yeah. a bigger yeah. console because it's gonna sell is it is it that thing like because like, because i'm seeing you and gonna holo live and you've had multiple conversations with other people in chat that have played resident evil games that have all been like yeah we're absolutely loving outbreak and i'm so i've never played it i don't even know mm. i can't tell you what it looks like uh but everyone wants it so why aren't they doing this thing um that, like, pokemon thing is is uh, you couldn't be more right about that the reason they haven't done it is because that's the main thing they want to keep up the sleeve do i think we're going to get that sooner or later i think we're going to get it a lot sooner now because Temtem is breathing down its neck um in terms of what Pokemon has been doing over the years, I think Temtem has potentially 
made them think, oh shit, they're actually doing stuff that we had in our pipeline that we had in, in, under our sleeve, and now they're doing it and they're getting the recognition from it. I think we will end up seeing an open world Pokemon game sooner or later. That isn't MMO. To be fair, I did play the Pokemon MMO, and it is a brilliant game. If you haven't played that, do if you are a Pokemon fan, do try that. Um, but it's yeah, I feel like. I've just seen Asim's comment there saying Code Veronica is the is the game most need of a remake now, and to to a massive degree, I I do agree with uh, to a massive extent. I do agree with them on that, but I I feel like if there was to release uh, a Resident Evil Four remake, I think that will appeal to the masses more, and the money that they will get for that will far far exceed what Code Veronica will ever sell. I never got to play Code Veronica until it came out on the PlayStation Two, and I think it was a Dreamcast exclusive for a, an, an amount of time. Is that a Dreamcast or a GameCube? I can't quite remember. I'm fairly certain it was a Dreamcast exclusive for for a number of years, if not a, a number of months. I can't genuinely remember. I was about 12 when it came out. Um, but I, I agree. I would love a Code Veronica remake. Um, I think Steve, the, the, one of the characters in it, was probably one of the biggest bellends that I've ever met in a Resident Evil game, and there has been a lot of them. Um, but <coughs> I, they've got, they've got a Evil. character called Steve. What's his last name? Yeah. Burnside, Steve Burnside. He sounds like a like a cop. Uh, Burnside. So you've got Barry something or other and Steve. Burnside. <laughs> no, Barry Burton. Yeah. Barry Burton and Steve Burnside, the most adventurous names in the world. I mean, you've got like Far Cry or whatever, which had like was it was that was our last just cause, which was like Rico Rodriguez or something like that. And then you've got a Barry Burnside, no Barry Burton and Steve Burnside. It's like is it, that's like that's like a a, a pair of hobby uh, like uh, Bobby's on the beat from the Bill. It's, it's Steve and Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I've got, I've, yeah, I, I agree. Code Veronica absolutely does need one, but I feel like if they was to ever put it, all their eggs in one basket, that they know they're going to get uh, some money back. I mean, I, I posted a tweet out the other day. It was 16 years old, and someone who uh, I've not spoken to for years, it was uh, it was a family friend, said, fucking hell, 16 years. He was serving uh, in the army at that time, and it just feels like time's just gone like that. I feel like I never would have thought he would have been a Resident Evil fan, but Resident <coughs> Evil 4 appealed to everybody. And if you wanted to get a game to get everybody back into the franchise again, make them nostalgic on a game that they perhaps would have played, uh, which would have been Resident Evil 4. And it would have been, I imagine, a lot of people's first Resident Evil game. That is the easiest way for Capcom to make money now. Then maybe we can consider a Resident Evil Code Runner again, because I agree, a lot of people need to play that game because it, it was the last game, I think, from memory, was the last one that we had tank controls for. Um, so if we could get a version of that, amazing. Um, but I think... So, off the bat now, if there was to make a remake of one, four has to be there as the bar for the rest of the games that come afterwards. I am going to kibosh the Resident Evil conversation now so we can move forward. I will jump back yeah, to the please. chat and catch up <laughs> things. Um, uh, St Steve in his choker. Barry's a legend, though, so he's gone whole alive. Uh, Gary says, yeah. uh, it's like they picked two random guys in a local pub to pick the names. <laughs> 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 there was a DI Burnside in the bill. That's probably why it reminds me of a copper then. There you go. Uh, Steve sells fake cigarettes all week and Barry sells counterfeit DVDs. <laughs> uh, Mr. T, there was... There we go. Resident Evil 4... Oh, no, did I do that one? Yeah, I did that one. Uh, Resident Evil 5 was an okay action game. I enjoyed it for what it was in co-op. Six, though, massive face palm. Uh, he also says, I think if I played five single player... Would have hated online co-op made it fun enough to see through see i okay. i think you, you can you can apply that to a lot of games um i mean how many things did you do with your mates that weren't in video games that passed hours that was just a complete waste of time and it was just the fact that you're with friends that uh, yeah you can get through most things that are horrendous as long as you've got a mate with you to, uh, to laugh at it's so, uh yeah i agree uh yeah resident evil 2 remake was one of the best remakes stay true to the original while modernizing it just enough um uh da -da -da -da. Uh, Gary agreeing with Asim saying that's a fair shot I played 5 in single player and that was a slog and mm -hmm. then let's scroll all the way back up because this helps me with my tangent um, Iceman don't know if you're still here dude um, he did say have you heard the rumours about uh, uh, rumours surrounding a potential Pokemon Diamond and Pearl release coming to Switch hmm it's almost like you've seen the next news article uh and i was actually going to jump onto that a little bit earlier when i mentioned pokemon as well but then <laughs> but then we carried on talking the like, fuck okay I've, I've lost my uh, tangent but anyway let's move forward next news story we will talk about resident evil again at some other point so feel free to keep coming back to the scoop because you know baby sat there in an rpd top if he's not going to talk about resident evil what is he going to talk about uh <laughs> But anyway, Tom Ivan now at VGC says, A report claims that Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes could release this year. Switch remakes could coincide with the Pokemon's 25th anniversary, it's claimed. 
Uh, so jumping into the body of the article. Oh, there we go. The Pokemon Company could be working on remakes of Nintendo DS games Diamond and Pearl, according to a new report and a freshly discovered website URL. Fan site Center of Pokemon claims to have been informed by sources close to the Pokemon Company that it will announce the games in February to coincide with the franchise's 25th anniversary. Original released in 2006, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl were the first installments in the fourth generation of Pokemon video game series. It's claimed that the remakes will hit Nintendo Switch in 2021 and feature classic capture mechanics as opposed to those uh, featured in Pokemon Let's Go, which is an absolute win because Pokemon Let's Go was let down by that. But anyway, um, potentially lending weight to the report uh, is Central Pokemon's discovery that a diamond pearl dot Pokemon dot com domain has been enabled. The URL currently returns a 403er, uh, 403 error, should I say, meaning access, 403er, nice, uh, meaning access to the requested resource is forbidden, but it may suggest the Pokemon company has created blocked content under the Diamond and Pearl name. A noted insider who has previously leaked accurate timings related to the Nintendo Directs also recently claimed that Pokemon remakes would be released in November 2021. Mainline Pokemon installments Red and Blue, Gold and Silver, and Sapphire and Ruby have, ha uh, have all been remade, so fourth generation Diamond and Pearl is theoretically next in line for the same treatment. On DS, Diamond and Pearl were introduced, uh, introduced internet play over Nintendo Wi-Fi connection, several changes to the core battle mechanics, and the addition of over 100 new Pokemon. The game takes place in the fictional region of Sinnoh, an island based on the Japanese island of Hokkaido, characterised by its large snow-covered mountains. And last November, the company began uh, teasing plans for a very special upcoming celebration of Pokemon's 25th anniversary in 2021. Uh, and then there's other stuff about Katy Perry, but I will leave that for now. Uh, and probably forever. But um, Diamond and Pearl potentially being remade this year. Surprise or not, babe? Uh, no, I'm not. Um, but this this makes me a little bit happy because I never played the Nintendo DS versions of Pokemon games. I think the Nintendo... Uh, sorry, Game Boy Advance was probably the last ones that I've played until obviously they started to remaster them for the uh, Nintendo Switch. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is definitely something that I could get behind. Um, I I'm still 150. That's it. That's all there is. To, You're not that to... old. Don't say yeah. that. No. <laughs> Pokemon will always be the one, the first 150 for me. 151. Um, you got to get. Well, I'm sorry, Mew in there as yeah. well. See, I'm going to yeah. stop you just for a second because that triggers me. The fact that Mew two is 150, and Mew is 151. Um, and th th there's all sorts of stories about, like, I think there's, like, some official answer of, like, yeah, Mewtwo was first officially discovered um, before Mew. And I'm thinking, yeah, but you got Mewtwo because you got Mew's DNA. So technically that confirms that Mew existed first. So shouldn't Mew... <laughs> but anyway, carry on. Sorry, you go, you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't got much more else to put on that one. I mean... Th Anybody that's in the chat that's been where that's that's played any of these before. I mean, are, are you excited about this? Is it, it, what are you expecting from this that you maybe didn't see in the original game that you're hoping may make it to the game? Are you expecting any changes from the like, the last Pokemon game that came out? Are you, are you expecting anything to come from that? I, I I don't know. I don't. I never played the the original, so I'm just coming to this with an open mind. Well, I I don't have much to add because similar to Bib, um, red and blue and yellow. Um, is pretty much the only Pokemon games that I will play. I or something that encapsulate that and and builds on everything. I don't really want all the extras and stuff because I'm an angry old man and old man yells at Cloud from the Simpsons kind of thing. That's me. I'm Grandpa Simpson yelling at Clouds. I want I want the first game, but open worldy and and full and majestic. And then after that, you can add in. Uh, uh, generation two, three, four, and five. Afterwards, if you want, I'll play Gen one bit and then be done. Nice, a happy job's good. I'll get, I'll get to the uh, Elite Four or whatever it's called. Smash my way through that Indigo Plateau. Boom, that's it. I'm done. Uh, don't need to play anymore. Fine. Um, but that old maniness kind of ties into one of the comments that was in there in terms of Pokemon Let's Go had different catch mechanics that was based on Pokemon Go, mm. um, and it's. For someone that played Pokemon Go daily until about three, four, five months ago, um, you'd have thought, oh, well, that will work well for me. It didn't at all. I took uh, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu on some 12-hour plane flights to Argentina for an event we were working on and started it. I mean, it was an issue it didn't save, so I had to start it again. But it was just laborious as hell. Having to do these, like... 
uh, throws and then trying to get streaks to get more rare Pokemon. And it just turned Pokemon into a mobile grind and I didn't like it all. So the fact that they're not going to put that stuff into the next uh, game, obviously it's a remake, so it's probably less normal to put it into a remake because you're changing the foundation of an older game. But it could be a sign that they've realised that it was shit and nobody really wanted that. So get rid of that. Keep that in your mobile game, but keep the console games, including switching the console. Cause, but it is, it's handheld. Um, so yeah, including that stuff in there, not needed. Doesn't need it. Move on. Boom. Nice. Okay, let's move ahead. Okay, we've, we've, yeah. we've dealt with Pokemon. Um, something completely different uh, and something we've not spoken about apart from the watch-along uh, last... Uh, August? I don't know. Oh, Gary says I would buy Diamond if they remade it. No, uh, it would be Diamond. It was a sh- it was it was a classic Gary joke. Uh, oh, it would be Diamond. Okay, okay. I, re- I was I was too busy trying to go into it. That's because he's a Diamond geezer. Uh, I, I was in my me- mind. I'd already made the joke up, so I'd ruined Gary's joke at the expense of my own. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I mean, at least Bibby can read. He's got all these pearls of wisdom. Anyway, let's ju- jump. Jump. Uh, no, okay, no, okay. Uh, Matt Wales at Eurogamer says, Ubisoft delays mass multiplayer outdoor extreme sports game, Riders Republic, which is now due later this year. Riders Republic, uh, Ubisoft's, and I'm going to say it again because it's in the article, but this is the most elaborate dis- uh, title for a genre of game. Mass multiplayer outdoor extreme sports game. Wow. Uh, so that game, Riders Republic, for Xbox... Um, PlayStation and PC will no longer release on the 25th of February as previously announced and has been delayed to some currently unspecified point later this year. Riders Republic, revealed at the tail end of last year, is something of a spiritual successor to Ubisoft's underappreciated winter sports effort, Steep, albeit with that game's focus on snowy pursuits expanded out to encompass a wide range of different activities. Snowboarding, biking, skiing and wingsuit action, there we go, Uh, both vanilla and jet-powered across varied terrain. Solo and co-op play is supported as players participate in events across Riders Republic's world stitched together from seven iconic U.S. national parks. Bryce Canyon, Yosemite Valley, uh, Sequoia Park, Zion, Canyonlands, Mammoth Mountain, and Grand Teton? Teton? I've not heard of most of those. Uh, But Ubisoft is very much pushing large-scale competition as a focus, including races with upward of 50 players. We just become best friends, yep. Although Riders Republic was originally scheduled for a 25th of February release on PC, PS4, and Xbox One, uh, with Xbox Series X and S and PS5 uh, optimations promised, Ubisoft has now made the decision to shift its launch to some time later this year. This additional time, the publisher explains in a statement posted to its website, will allow our passionate team to deliver the best fun-fueled experience to our players. There's no further indication of why a delay was deemed necessary or when Ubisoft might be hoping to get Riders Republic out into the wild, but more information... soon. What are your initial thoughts on Riders Republic, Bib? Well, when I saw it last year, I thought, what is this bag of shit that I am watching? I thought it looked tired, but the more I've looked at it, and looked at it, more looks of it. The more I've looked at it, <laughs> it looks. It just. I'm not going to take it too serious because I don't think it's taking itself too seriously, which makes me happy. I think it looks like a fun game. It look. It. It just looks like a. They ever play Trials? That's what I thought. Trials. It looks like Trials Fusiony kind of. But, yeah, but, but the other way Yeah, yeah. No, no, I know what you mean. I agree. Uh, I thought the exact same thing when I saw the trailer. Do you know what? I'll go back to the article. I'll put the article on screen and I will play the trailer whilst we keep talking. Uh, there we go. So this um, was the cinematic premiere. So it's basically a, a downhill race and you're oh, like people on bikes. But then people on bikes, people on BMXs, people on motorbikes, skiers, and then all of the rest are all competing. And in in I believe in the... Um, in the talk on, was it in a Ubisoft conference or was Ubisoft, did Ubisoft include it in, say, like a, either a Gamescom or a Sony or an Xbox specific conference? I can't remember which one it was. Um, it was the last one that me and you, that I remember being in with you was at the Xbox showcase. I, I, I don't think you came in. Oh, you did one of the Xbox show, showcases, but you weren't in for the other because Jordan joined in for that one. Um, maybe Gamescom, I can't remember. Uh, but me and you watched this trailer. Yeah. It, it might have been the early Xbox game show, uh, uh, Xbox showcase, if not Gamescom. Um, anyway, um, 
I'm fairly sure they mentioned that there'll be battle royale stuff in it and and all sorts of other things in there as well. So I was thinking, okay, you've not it's not a bike game, it's not a snowboard game, uh, it's not a skiing game, uh, it's not versus, it's not battle royale, it's all of that. Is that yeah? yeah it confused me because it had my attention. I was like, it does look pretty. Cool. It looks like it could be some batshit crazy game. Um, but then I'm thinking, is it just going to be too much, too many variables? How are you going to make it balance? Is it just going to be... Pfft? So, yeah, I'm, I'm unsure. I'm unsure about it. What, what what are your initial opinions? Is anyone heavily just against it in terms of like, fuck that, it, it looks shit? Does anyone, does it catch anyone's attention? What what do you guys think? Do let us know. Um, I would be intrigued to see what, what other people think of it. Um, David says, I'm sure there are, uh, there's a Diamonds Are Forever joke in there somewhere. Get out of here. Uh, I can't wait to try this. It looks like a lot of fun, uh, says Gary. Um, uh, it's just missing the monster tie-in on the title. It'll happen. It'll happen. <laughs> uh, Steep users, all 46 of them, can be heard crying at this game coming out. <laughs> Steep, though. I mean, what happened with Steep? Steep won the... Was it the E3 Best Sports Game Award? Uh, this is a, an award that is pretty much... As well. What's that? Without multiplayer. Yeah, exactly. Um, there was lots of cries for why did Steep win that award when no one had really heard much about it before and they'd spent a shit load on promoting it at E3. Um, so they basically give the... Uh, is it, I can't remember. Is, is it... I can't remember. I want to say ESA, but, but I can't remember the name of the organisation that looks is after E3 in America. Anyway... There was a lot of money spent. There was lots of natural accusations that they'd spent a lot of money. Uh, so they won an award. Um, anyway, the game actually looked pretty decent, but it just came from nowhere and fizzled out very, very quietly, very, very quickly. Um, and that was SSX, man. That's all we need. Yeah, a bit tricky. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, so anyway, that fizzled out. We've heard nothing for that on that for about five or six years now, and then. This just kind of comes out of nowhere. What? What? I'm intrigued to see what people people think. Does Does the craziness attract you, or does that turn you off? Thoughts. Um, Gone Hollers Live says, not usually a fan of sports types of games, but this one looks super fun. Uh, hoping Microsoft adds Ubisoft to Game Pass, and I'll give it a shot. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah. There we go. Um, I had to review Steep, and I had to put a statement in the review to say I couldn't fully review it because it wouldn't connect, and the game was unplayable at launch. Wow, ESA, yeah, I thought so. I just after saying it in my head, I'm thinking, am I mixing it up? Because I haven't said it since, like, obviously it's summer when we're, uh, early summer when we're talking about E3 being cancelled and and them having a shit show and potentially coming back and and stuff. And then I was thinking, is ESA some sort of benefit that you get in the UK now? <laughs> it's like, uh, so I was like, I don't know, I can't remember. So yeah, it just sounded wrong in my head when I said it. But thank you very much, Match, for the uh, fact checking. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I mean, hopefully this will be better. The fact that they've postponed it is a good thing. Um, see, see, there you go. We've not, we've not got a cyberpunk story today. It's not the cyber scoop <laughs> today. Um, but there you go, CD Projekt Red. That's what you needed to do. Not ready. Push it back. I know you did that two or three times, but they've just pushed that back to we don't know when. Pushing it back a month or so at a time it, when it's uh, not ready. Nah, just just push it back. Just push it back. Um, seems like a very strong title uh, to fail near instantly and abandoned by U Ubisoft. I know it. Uh, I mean, that you've got to think as well. The amount of money that they put in, and the amount that they didn't get back, those losses have got to have been steep. No. Okay. Okay. Let's move ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, Riders Republic has been delayed. Uh, will be due out later in the year. No uh, time on when. Um, but in the meantime, if you want something else to, to play and you want them to be free, as subscription services may be required, um, <laughs> then we have a nice little bit of a roundup. As we tend to often yeah. do on Fridays, we usually tell you about the good, uh, the good games it. that you can get at little to no cost. And these include, this is an article written by Steph Nunnally for VG247. Um, actually, let me say Stephanie Nunnally. I usually say Steph um, just because my sister's called Steph. Um, Stephanie, so but I shortened it to Steph. Um, so I don't actually know if Stephanie Nunnally likes that. So Stephanie Nunnally for VG247 says, Star Wars Squadrons, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, and Ukulele are free to play with Xbox Live Gold. 
So three games are free to play this weekend with Xbox Live Gold. Star Wars Squadron, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, and Ukulele are free to play from today through to Sunday with Xbox Live Gold. Each will be available for Xbox Live Gold and Xbox Game Pass Ultimate members. If you play the games during this time, should you decide to purchase, you can continue playing while keeping your gamer score and earned achievements during the event. As well as being free to play, two of the games are also on sale. You can pick up Star Wars Squadrons for 40% off at $23.99, um, and Ukulele is 75% off at $9.99. Dragon Ball Fighter Z doesn't seem to be on sale and will run you the standard $59.99. So if you're an Xbox player and you fancy playing Star Wars Squadrons, Dragon Ball Fighter Z and Ukulele, you can play them this weekend at no charge. And then buy them if you want. Um, but if you're not got an Xbox and you want some Star Wars fun, there is also a good story that we did mention this on Friday last week, but just a nice reminder because we don't want you guys missing out on your freebies. Uh, is this written by Andy Chalk at PC Gamer? Star Wars Battlefront 2, the Celebration Edition, is now free on the Epic Games Store. After a rough start, Star Wars Battlefront 2 grew into the best Star Wars game we've had in years, says the tagline. So Star Wars Battlefront 2, one of the good things to come out of EA's decade-long exclusive partnership with Disney, is now free for the week on Epic Games Store. The Celebration Edition includes the base game and all customization content released up to and including the Rise of Skywalker expansion. Star Wars Battlefront 2 uh, was a reasonably okay multiplayer shoot when it came out in 2017. A spectacular, occasionally very fun tour of Star Wars battles that disappoints with a boring story, crappy progression system and endless grenade spam, we said in our 63 out of 100 review, uh, but, was, but was better known as the game that kicked off the long-running loot box controversy that led to heightened scrutiny of industry practices and new regulations in some countries. EA stuck with it, though, and ultimately evolved it into the best Star Wars game we've had in years. Um... Star Wars Battlefront 2 Celebration Edition is free on the Epic Store until January the 21st. The Interstellar Extravaganza will continue after that uh, with the outstanding sci-fi Forexa? Uh, Galactic Civilizations 3. Um, if you're in the mood for even more free games, and why wouldn't you be? Other links in the article. Nice. Um, so there you go. Star Wars Battlefront 2 is completely free for you to keep and own. Uh, own and keep, there we go, um, on the Epic Game Store. Big thoughts. Uh, I actually made room on my PC this morning to be able to download this. It's it's weird because we actually spoke about this yesterday or the day before we were talking about what we wanted from a new Star Wars game. And I was looking at the price of this so that I could actually give it a go because I played the original one not for long. Um, obviously, the, the original, I, I had Star Wars Battlefront on the PSP many, 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 many years ago. And then obviously the reader did it um, and didn't really get into it. I know you said that you had a good, really, really good time with it. Um, but this one, yeah, I think I've made room for it on my PC. I'm going to download it overnight uh, and then see where we can go from that. I am looking forward to getting stuck into it, though. I asked you whether or not it was like a Call of Duty corridor shooter or a Battlefield, and you said you think that it was potentially more of a Battlefield game, so you can play for half an hour and take down bases. If that's what it is, it's going to stay on my PC for a long time. Yeah, it basically has TDM, which is... Where I, I tend to think of Call of Duty as TDM. I know there's a lot more than that in Call of Duty with, um, uh, I can't remember the one where you've got to disarm the bombs that's like CS, search and destroy ish sort of stuff. Um, but there is that. Then there's um, the space crafty, like dog fights in space uh, fighters, X Wing fighters. And then there's, uh, someone did tell me the other day, um, the one that's kind of like push or whatever it was in it's Conquest. Conquest, that's it. So there is one where you have to defend, say, um, an armoured uh, at, -AT. I, don't, I can't remember the, something exact. We'll just say it. there's an at, -AT walking through Hoth. I think that may be one of the missions. You, um, depending on which side of the battle you get put on, have to defend them or, or you have to take them down. And if you don't do it, you, there's like three point A, point B, point C, and you have to kind of like yeah. win a certain amount of points. Um, so you might win point A, but lose point B. So you've got one each and then point C. And it's like five points or whatever. But yeah, it lasts about 30, 35 minutes. Unless you really shit and you lose the first three points, then it's game over 15 minutes. But <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, stuff like that really excites me. So I'm looking forward to getting involved. I just want to hear the Star Wars noise, noises. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's nothing... Genuinely, um, EA have fucked up a lot, as we've said, when it comes to Star Wars over the years. Battlefront 2... Um, genuinely as well as it mentions in this article became exceptional as a star wars game towards the end of it they fixed mm -hmm. um the leveling the loot boxing the, the the fact that when the game first launched 
you pretty much just had a sniper rifle. Um, there's no point picking up anything else because your other weapons, you had to get these little little fecking add-on cards to, which make you a bit more powerful. So the game, you became a better player the longer you played it. Not because of your skill, but because of the progression systems, which yeah. I'm never a fan of that sort of shit. I don't, I don't want to lose a fight even though I've got more skill because the guy that I'm playing has been playing it longer. I should lose the yeah. fight because I'm not as good or I made the wrong decisions. Um, and the only way to combat that was to use sniper rifles. So people were running around with sniper rifles, just free firing, hit firing, no scoping sort of stuff because sniper rifles was, were ridiculous. Everything was bad. Um, and that's why I, like I said, I, I bought the special edition thinking it was going to be exceptional and just didn't enjoy it at all. Um, I've been meaning to for about a year now to jump back in and play it again. This could be the one that actually gets me in. But yeah, you're talking about the audio. There's nothing... I've had nothing more exciting well a couple of things i had i used to have and one of those like x rocker gaming chairs that have like speakers built into it and a subwoofer built mm -hmm. into it just sat in the chair with like two speakers over your ears and then you're hearing the so the tune like kicks off that's incredible um but either in a chair or when you've got a decent headset on when you're in the middle of a fight and you're hearing people throwing like thermal detonators and and you're hearing the blasters and and fucking ships flying past and stuff those audio cues are, because they're charged by your memory, but they are epically charged. You just sat there like, oh my god, this is fucking amazing! Whereas, whereas you can you can be in Battlefield and Call of Duty and you hear a grenade going off. You've heard grenades going off in every game that you've ever played forever. Not in every game do you hear like thermal detonators goes, bang, bang, <laughs> yeah. and then fucking a TIE fighter flying across the top of your head. Yeah, it's good. It's really, really good. Um... Uh, where did we get to? Um, it might be a battle getting to the front to download this for free. <laughs> that was that was a bit too shoehorn, Gary. T nope, nope. I appreciate the others. I'm not letting you have that. Not one. your best effort. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not going to celebrate that edition of your pod, mate. No, no. Uh, best Star Wars game in years is a fairly low bar uh, when it came out. Uh, yeah, that's actually pretty true. There hasn't been that much to sell. Oh, that's that said, I did I. Really liked Star Wars Battlefront, but it was heavily flawed. Heavily flawed. I enjoyed it for uh, a heads down team deathmatch sort of Star Wars game. So that Call of Duty ish element, but with Star Wars. I really, really enjoyed it for that, but it didn't have anything else. So for that, it's it was a nine out of ten for a for a team deathmatch first person shooter or third person friend, shooter. Yeah. But it was a it was probably a six or seven out of ten for an overall game because yeah. it just didn't have anything progression wise. Um, so yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Um, the squadron, uh, multiplayer mode is actually pretty fun, says Green Hollow Live. Uh, so there you go, babe. Squadron, give that a try. Um, mm -hmm. uh, download it last night, says Gagad. Looking forward to playing it this evening. I mean, that's a hey. good shout. Good shout. We'll, we'll all jump on. We'll all jump on. Nice. Uh, Conquest, yeah. uh, says Madge, and they put the exact same card system into Need for Speed Heat. I didn't Ouch. like it. See, I, I love the fact, I mean, uh, covering all ground that we covered yesterday. And I because we are out of time pretty much. But um, I loved Star Wars Battlefront because you could create your classes. You could do do whatever you want. And they made um, Battlefront 2 to be more like... I, am, I think Battlefield has classes where you can be a medic and you can be a whatever, um, rather than just choosing what grenades... If you want grenades or if you want some revival stim or whatever. You used to be able to fully customise it in the first one. They tried to add balance in, in the second one, which instantly took me away from it. I was like, oh, okay. You're just kind of making it into Battlefield. Um, and then with the weapons being all a bit duff and having to use unbalanced things, it kind of lost my attention by that point. But by the end of it, apparently they'd redone a lot of that. So we'll give it a try. We'll give it a try. Um, I put a ton of hours into Battlefront. I didn't uh, care how many times I died. Uh, and I was just happy being in that world again. I mean, I, I spent ages figuring out like all the uh, the sweat spots as well. Like on, um, I don't know if it was, I'm assuming it was Hoth because it was a snowy map, but there was a way to get onto some fecking high ledge if you had the uh, the booster backpack kind of thing and you jumped up. And then there was the one where, um, what's the name of that big sort of like trash thing that the, the little... Is it the Jawas or whatever live inside? There was a map, uh, one of those maps where you could boost onto the top of that and then melt people. I spent ages. I mean, I got good at boots on the ground and then I became an absolute sweat lord. And, and <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Anyway, do you know what? Played too much of it. We'll leave it at that. Whew. Anyway, 
Uh, reminder, Star Wars Battlefront 2 is out now. And it's free on the Epic Games Store. So get it. You only have until next Thursday um, when it'll disappear. So make sure you get it now. Don't miss out on it because it's an amazing game. With all of the extras thrown in for free. So get it while you can. Um, and a quick reminder that Star Wars Squadrons plus Dragon Ball Z and Ukulele are free this weekend with Xbox Live Gold. You don't need Game Pass Ultimate for that. But yeah, just Live Gold will be enough. Um, the other thing to remind, because I only did it myself the other day, is... Um, don't forget the free PlayStation Plus games. There's some good ones this month, including Rise of the Tomb Raider, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. One of those. I can't remember which one it is. Greedfall. Uh, Greedfall Shadow and Manita. Yes. So you can be a big shark. Nice. Um, uh, 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 uh. Battlefront and Battlefield kind of morphed uh, into one, losing the best of each game and becoming a little worse. Audio is still epic on both. Yeah, yeah. Um, Battlefield can still be exceptional. <laughs> I just don't like the the old, uh, like I say, modern boots on the ground. That's me. Give me Battlefield Bad Company 2. I will take that all day. Give me a remake yeah. of that. Yes, please. Um, Battlefield Bad Company 3. Nice. Shadow. There you go. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is free on PS Plus. So if you're a PlayStation user, don't forget to get those games because they are free right now. I only did it myself yesterday, so make sure you get your free games. And that is the end of the scoop. Uh, Gone Holler Live. Thank you very much for the follow uh, three minutes ago. And I missed this one 18 minutes ago. Silent Kitty 2. Thank you very much for the follow. Appreciate it. Uh, the support much much appreciated also thank you for joining us too i did see a comment a little bit earlier on uh from gone holler live saying um first time viewer because when baby was talking about i don't know if you've seen how much there we go first time viewer always looking for new british gaming podcasts well you found one thank you very yeah. much for being here thank you very much for the follow um we stream each and every single weekday at 10 a.m so there you go um we are going to disappear we may be back usually um, we would stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, with Masters of the League, which is our PES um, Master League, where we're in the game, green screened in. Nice. That has been off for a month because of birthdays and COVID and Christmas and New Year's and things. Um, so that, uh, we said, might come back this week. It's not going to come back this week. There won't be an episode of that today. We played Streets of Rage 4 on Wednesday, so there's a chance that we could play some Streets of Rage for today, um, but we do have some work stuff to happen um, in between that, so that might come on later on, uh, it might not. Turn your notifications on if you do follow us, though, you will get notified when we go live. But before we do disappear, and um, if we do come back before Streets of Rage 4, is there anything that you want to add before then, Bib? Yes, again, thank you very much for each and every one of you that have followed today, whether or not you've been lurking in the chat or being active, we very much appreciate you both. So, if you do want to get involved with the show, there is two ways that you can do that. First of all, find us on social media at Ice Cream Models across all major social media platforms. Second way, get into our Discord. There is an area on the left-hand side that says the scoop. All you need to do is drop in the URL as well as your thoughts and opinions on the piece. We will then give you our thoughts and opinions on the very next show, which will be at what time? Oh, on Monday. Ooh, it's it's great tomorrow. It'll be I know. <laughs> smack bang at 10 a.m. on the money-ish. Ish, ish, ish. <laughs> we go out live at 10 a.m. ish. It's, it can be 10 a.m. can be a little bit after because we do have uh, IRL work that we do uh, alongside that. Just a quick point that I didn't mention as well before we stream. Um, Madge has just put the Discord links in the chat. Thank you very much, Madge, for doing that. What a guy. What a guy. Um, if you are in our Discord and you are a sub, make sure that you link your Twitch and Discord accounts because that will unlock the loot box channel for you. If you're in the loot box channel, you could win a free prize every month. Last well, this month's prize uh, was given to Spike, Big Zombie Monkey, who chose to win a copy of Cyberpunk for PC. Next month, um, there's a whole new prize. So we get, we do one prize yeah. each and every month or something to give back to our subs. So if you're in the Discord, make sure your accounts are linked. And also that... that does, if, you, if you're a Prime subscriber, don't worry about that because you are a subscriber. It doesn't matter. One tier, one, two, three, all Prime. All subs are equal in the loot drop. So feel free to get involved there. Anyway, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, nice. Um... Thank you all for being here. Much, much appreciated. Uh, we're going to disappear. If we don't come back with Streets Rage 4 or any additional content over the weekend, we'll see you at 10 a.m. ish on Monday. Until then, Bibby's got a message for you. <gasps> First thing, Ross, yes, I do play 2021 still. Uh, I play it pretty much every single day, whether or not I'll be on a PlayStation, PC, or on my Nintendo Switch. <laughs> but apart from that, guys, <gasps> stay frosty. Stay frosty. <laughs>